Today is Wednesday, February the 8th, 2012. I'm Matthew TG. I am Stevan Sheets. I'm Heath Mulliken. I'm not Stevan Sheets. I'm Steve Stanley. And I'm Tony Casey. Welcome to the Technology Show, a weekly podcast featuring technology, theology, and everything in between. The world's only user antagonistic podcast. This is episode 143. Yay, Packers win the Super Bowl. Packers. Wait, that uh, was last year. No, 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 I don't think so. <laughs> well, we can always cheer Newt Gingrich's great win, a sweep across the Midwest. <laughs> Wait, that sinking sound, yeah. not Newt <laughs> Gingrich. <laughs> uh, what so, was it? What was it? Clinton said to Castro, "Your time is up." <laughs> <laughs> that was twenty years ago, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, uh, so, did everyone watch the Super Bowl? Yes. Oh, cool. No. All right. One of the, what? One of the funniest no. things is about uh, a couple of weeks ago, Jimmy Kimmel challenged people that during a critical point of the game to unplug the TV. And so the other night he played that on his show. And so you've got these videos and it's the last play of the game. The ball is up there. People are <laughs> unplugging the TV. And it was uh, interesting to see there. I, You know, I was pulling for the Patriots. I'll admit. Were you? Uh, you I just, I, seriously, really? now you're the only person that yeah. you're the first person I have talked to that was pulling for the Pats. I kept saying I didn't know anyone. Well, you, I was pulling for the Pats wow. at, because the Giants knocked patsy. the Cowboys out of. Uh, <laughs> and this is what I've been telling everybody: if the if Tony Romo in Week 16, I think, if Tony Romo completes a 10 yard pass yeah. to a wide open Miles Austin, yeah. The Giants don't even make the playoffs. Oh. And that just, to me, makes it all the more remarkable that they got on such a roll. They were that close. I mean, Matt Rampey, all his Twitter was talking about how lucky they were. But, man, the every time the last seven weeks of the of football that the ball needed to bounce their way. Yeah. And, and the Cowboys were the only team in the NFL that fell prey to the if. Huh? <laughs> what, what is this if, if stuff? What, if, do you, what do you mean if, man? <laughs> If, well, if if the Steelers would have beat Denver, then they probably would have been in the Super Bowl. Yeah, I mean you're, you're probably right. <laughs> what is if this? the Packers hadn't pulled off one of the greatest choke jobs <laughs> in NFL, NFL Y'all history. done talking in tongues. All yeah. right. Uh, well, we want to welcome Stevan to <laughs> the show. Stevan, you did watch the Super Bowl, I assume. I did. I did. I did. I did. I was up for the last uh, four or five minutes, standing uh, as close as I could to the TV to catch those last minutes. That was. Uh, I was in a, it was a great Super Bowl. And you were was, you were rooting for the Giants? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. I was shocked. I was shocked. Um, I was watching with one of my former uh, students who uh, we uh, was at our church in Wisconsin. He he drove in to uh, spend some time with us. He's in the Navy now, and he he spent the day with us. And um, we were sitting there watching the Super Bowl, and we kept looking at each other, going, "Is this the Super Bowl?" Because there's so many mistakes being made yeah. on in in this professional level that it it doesn't even feel like. It's the biggest game ever. I, yeah. I would like for you all to just go back over the past five years and watch the Super Bowl. That's the way it is. It's such a high-charged game yeah. that, in my opinion, there are more mistakes made. It's always underwhelming, really, uh, when you compare it to yeah. uh, some of the playoff games because everybody's so on edge. I think that's what but th- it is. But at least the games are close. I mean, I would say mm-hmm. pretty much a decade of my life, it was blowouts. And so I am glad that the games are – uh, the games are closed. Hey, could you get that? He's yeah, a, I got he's that. A, Hello, <laughs> hello. Hey, now we have a giveaway. Um, I so was actually, I was actually calling Heath just then. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. Devin. Uh, we we have a, a giveaway, and so let's talk about that. Um, this and this is something that what the uh, spiritual formation department yep. is donating. Yes, the spiritual formation department of the Wesleyan Church is giving away the I Follow series, which is a total of thirteen books. It actually takes you through a year and ten weeks of spiritual formation and youth devotionals. It can be done uh, individually or with a group if you're a youth pastor. Or pastor, great resource to use with your youth group, and you've got until about nine thirty to mention at Techology on Twitter. Or you can go and tag the Techology Show on Facebook, and we'll put those names in a hat and have that drawing at the end of the show. And uh, those books will be sent out to you later this week. All righty. Um, so now, Heath uh, and Stevan, you guys are going to be part of an event next week, and this is the whole fuel. Uh, may, d- d- describe what that is, um, and um, you know what what you know what the meeting's about, and you know the impact for youth ministry in Wesleyan Church. 
it, it's it's a uh, it's a yearly event that we have, and it, it's basically the pastors gathering for for youth pastors, and youth pastors come from all over the country. Uh, it's a time of just you know restoration and and just getting renewed. I mean, it used to be called Catalyst. It used to be called Carpenter's Workshop, and and we we call it Fuel now because it really is. It's just kind of check out of what you're doing at your church and come get refueled at. Um, and typically the event, normally it's at Wesleyan headquarters, but in convention years, it's at the convention site. And so this year we're going to uh, Louisville, uh, Kentucky, and Stevan and I have been fortunate enough to be on the planning committee for this. And Stevan, we got a great lineup. Tell, tell them who's coming. Um, <clears throat> the, the main speaker for the uh, event is Kyle Eidelman, and he is the pastor at Southeast Christian. Is that what it's called? Yes, I, yeah, I'm sure. That's the name of the church. He is a phenomenal speaker, a guy I've been following for a lot of years, um, watching some of their uh, curriculum that they've put out. When I was when I was a youth pastor, um, one of the curriculums I used in, in multiple churches was H2O, which is a, a, a very well put together video curriculum. And uh, I've just been trying to find out who this guy is. And he just finished a book maybe a year ago called um, Not a Fan. And uh, it really follows the same idea as what the Follow Tour and Follow 2012 is about. So it's really an honor for us to have him there. He's going to be uh, our speaker for our main sessions. And uh, we've got a real funny guy being our, our host this year, Dustin Okui, uh, a good southern boy uh, down at um, <clears throat> 12 Stone Church. He's going to be our our, uh, our resident funny guy. And his band, the A-Town A-List, is going to be our our house band. It's kind of going to be yeah. like a, a late night show feel uh, yeah. again this year, maybe taken to a new extreme. It's going to be great. It's really so going to be great. How long is the event for you guys? Uh, it's uh, Thursday and everybody will come in Thursday and Friday and then leave out Saturday morning. And uh, so it's about a, it's about a two day event. Seven and I have, I have to go at Wednesday because since we're the big honchos, we got to go make sure right. everything's in place and make I'm, sure I'm the excited pres- about the private jet. Yeah. Now you are you guys you guys have eight. Is that wait a minute? Is that in the bathtub? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Uh, wait, way too quick, Steve. You've been waiting to say that. Yeah. <laughs> what are you gonna say, Tony? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> that just knocked me off line there. Uh, I think I was going to ask if you guys were going to provide 8x10 glossies and kind of <laughs> pass them out. Yeah. Of your yes, 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 yeah. yes, we there are. There will be a table, a table for signing and uh, promoting <laughs> yeah. WesleyanBooks.net. Yeah, yeah, really, yeah, I bet there will yeah, be. That's right. uh, uh, one of the cool things yeah. is um, – we are uh, we're giving away I think three twelve hundred dollar youth grants to to youth groups. I'm really excited about that. We're, it's going to be a little bit different. I'm I'm excited. It's going to be great. It's going to be a great weekend. Now, how did that, how did, how does that work? Uh, spiritual formation is giving away. They're going to do a drawing. If your youth group wins, you I think you get a check for twelve hundred dollars for your youth no group way. that you can yep. use for whatever. It's okay. just a grant but, for but your the ministry. Youth pastor has to be attending, or the youth. Yeah, you, yeah, you must be present to win. Right. Hey, are you? Th- are and you and not out golfing in, in Louisville somewhere during the drawing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Um, well, listen, let's keep moving along here. Uh, yesterday, if you were paying attention at all, um, you know that there was a ruling by um, the Ninth Circuit Court, and it uh, shot down California's Proposition 8. Uh, it was a two-to-one ruling. Um, if you're not sure what Prop 8 is, this was the proposition uh, that uh, voters uh, voted into law saying uh, against same-sex marriage and affirming um, marriage between a husband and a wife. Um, b- before we get into that, I mean, there, there are a lot of things we can talk about with this issue. What I'd like to do is just back up, take a deep breath, and, and just remind us that for the church, this issue is broader than just same-sex marriage. And we're back. (laughs) We've had had a few technical difficulties here in this studio. Uh, We apologize to those of you that are watching live and... um, for those of you getting uh, the show later, you already saw the little hamster there that told right. you we had some difficulties. We we switched out the hamster on the wheel, powered <laughs> back up. Uh, 
<laughs> Louis d- is dead, but 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 little choppers back in there running his legs. Oh goodness! Off. For our live listeners, you have no idea what hamster we're talking about. So I'm gonna find him while you guys talk a little bit more right. and, and put him up here. All right, All right. Go ahead. well, you get ready because we have a video here pretty quick. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I got you. Yeah, when when we when things crashed here in the studio, we're talking about Prop Eight being turned over, and um, I was just making the comment that you know for the church there. The issue is just bigger than same-sex marriage. Um, there are uh, biblical um, things that we bring to the forefront in terms of sexuality as a whole and the way that that um, we conduct our lives sexually. And so uh, a few weeks ago, we played two minutes out of a seven-minute clip by Bill Hybels. Now, this uh, I'll set this up. Uh, what happened was George Schultz, the CEO of Starbucks, was supposed to come speak at um, the Leadership Summit there at Willow Creek, and there were uh, pro-homosexual groups that began to protest this, and the end result was that George Schultz pulled out of it. And so you have Hybels who's addressing that. And so going to play the, the full seven-minute clip here because it creates some talking points, and I think that Hybels does a great job of just presenting the issue on the church's side here. So let's watch this, and then we'll talk about the Prop 8. So, well, I have uh, good news and bad news for you. Uh, Question, if you're a leader and you have a presentation to make, which will include good news and bad news, which news should you always present first? Bad news, of course, because you want to end with the good news. Okay, so I'll start with the bad news. Howard Schultz, the founder and CEO of Starbucks, decided to cancel out of this year's summit. Now, it's bad news, and it leaves all of you asking, why? Well, here's more bad news. Um, In the last seven days, an online petition was started to boycott Starbucks if Howard Schultz did not cancel his signed contract to this event. The issue driving this petition, which so far has been signed by 717 people, is homosexuality. The petition claims that Willow Creek Community Church is anti-gay. Therefore, if the president of Starbucks speaks here, then Starbucks should be boycotted, or so the thinking goes. Now, Howard and his leadership team had a tough decision to make. Jim Mayotto and I spent 45 minutes in a very constructive conversation with the senior leaders at Starbucks, explaining to them in no uncertain terms that Willow is not anti-gay. But at the end of the day, they decided that the downside business risk was just too high for them, so Howard and his team decided to cancel, and we agreed to let him out of his contract without any penalty. Now, this whole thing is sad to me on a number of different levels. First, if the organizers of this petition had simply taken the time to call us, we would have explained to them, as we have to many others, that Willow is not only not anti-gay, Willow is not anti-anybody. Our church was founded... (laughs) Our church was founded on the idea that people matter to God. All people, all people of all backgrounds, colors, ethnicities, and sexual orientations. The the mat at every door on this campus has always read, welcome. And for over 35 years, we have flung the doors of this campus open to the widest array array of humanity I have ever witnessed in a local church. And thousands, tens of thousands, have come to learn the teachings of Jesus. So to suggest that we check sexual orientation or any other kind of issue at our doors is simply not true. Just ask the hundreds of people with same-sex attraction who attend our church every week. Now what is true is that we challenge homosexuals and heterosexuals to live out the sexual ethics taught in the scriptures which encourages full sexual expression between a man and a woman in the context of marriage and prescribes sexual abstinence and purity for everybody else. But, but even as we challenge all of our people to these biblical standards, 
We do so with grace-filled spirits, knowing the confusion and brokenness that is rampant in our fallen world. And at Willow, we honor the journey of everyone who's sincerely attempting to follow Christ. So it's unfortunate that we could not have explained this to those who called us anti-gay and started this petition. Second, what's further saddening to me, is the growing trend, specifically in the United States culture, to throw stones first and to ask questions later. We see this in our political system, and it's rapidly making our country ungovernable. Jesus taught and modeled a better way to treat everybody with respect, to believe the best about others, to seek to understand those with whom we might disagree, and if we must disagree, then attempt to do so respectfully. Anyway, our team spent some time in prayer and discussion about this situation, and here's how we plan to respond. First, as I said, we decided to let Howard out of his contract with no penalties. He had a tough business decision to make, and he made it. Second, Howard had to read, to, had to read through some threatening emails. I read through many of them myself, and I must admit the vitriol was quite hard to handle. So we would like to ask you to give Howard some other kinds of reading material. We would like you to write an email to starbucks.com, starbucks.com, and then it says, how do you contact us? You click on that. And with genuine Christian love, I don't need to say it twice. Just communicate, Howard, our churches are open to anybody, and we'd love to have you back at the summit someday. And I think his reading that uh, will have impact on him. Third, uh, buy a copy of Howard's book, Onward. Uh, it's one of the best leadership books I've read in a long time. I had to read it four times in my preparation to interview him, and so I'm real up on this book, Onward. <laughs> Jim actually apologized to me when it when Howard had to cancel, he said, Bill, I feel bad with all you have on your plate. You had to put all that work into an interview you're not giving. And I shot an email back to him. I said, don't ever apologize to me about this again. Because I read a great book four times, and I'm a better leader because of it. And I strongly encourage you to buy Howard's book, Onward. You'll be a better leader if you read it. Fourth, uh, pray for Jimmy and me, because we're going to follow the teachings of Jesus in Matthew 18. And we're going to see if we can meet with the people who started this boycott petition. We're going to just sit down and see if we can talk. And with a reconciling spirit, we're going to see if we can come to a better understanding and maybe a point of mutual respect moving ahead. Fifth and finally, and finally means something this time, finally, Buy a Starbucks coffee in the next couple of days and just show some Christian goodwill. Can you do that? All right, so that's all I want to say about this. And you go, all right, that's all bad news. Where's the good news? Okay, well, the good news is that one of the highest rated faculty members in Summit history has agreed to step in and fill Howard's slot, Patrick Lencioni. He's a fantastic guy. There we go. Patrick Lentioni. Yeah. <laughs> Five dysfunctions of a team. I read, I read that. That is a good. That's a good um, book. Death by meeting. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so um, let's jump in here. I mean, um, I, there are a couple ways we could go. We could talk about uh, Prop 8 um, uh, being overturned yesterday. We can also talk about Hybels and, and what he had to say. I think and the reason I wanted to show Hybels is because I think that he represents the attitude that we ought to have. Um, yes, yes, yes. It, the only alarming thing for me in this story is you have two stories this week, uh, uh, Proposition 8 overturned by the, the Court of Appeals, and then you also have uh, that the one thing we'll talk about a little later on involving the Catholic Church and the new um, health care legislation, is that for me you have two rulings where – there appears to be, in, in the case of Proposition 8, the people voted. You know, this is not something that the legislature just put through. Mm -hmm. There was a vote for this. And so they are overturning 
The will of the people. The will of the people. Yeah. And I'm not saying that there hasn't been times in, in our in history where the will of the people wasn't right. Right. But I don't think this is I don't think this is one of those times. Uh, there are different things here. I mean, Steve, you and I have had the conversation that one of the disturbing things, we saw a hint of this coming a year ago in a 125-page one, decision that one of the judges on the Ninth Circuit Court wrote. And what's most disturbing is how um, Christians are being portrayed in this in terms of uh, uh, people that are causing harm in the society. Mm -hmm. it, part of his decision, um, the judge... In, uh, in in that case that made the decision, read, uh, made this statement. Uh, religious beliefs that gay and lesbian relationships are sinful or inferior to heterosexual relationships harm gays and lesbians. And uh, my chief concern with that is that the legal definition of harm is a, is a very bright line in my understanding, between uh, who's going to be protected by law and who's going to be the focus of uh, remedial action or punitive action by the law. And for the first time, those of a traditional point of view, and that's really what we're talking about here, uh, because anything else, any, any um, illegal behavior towards a homosexual or heterosexual is already punishable by law. But for the first time, in law, in, in a legal pronouncement, those of a traditional uh, biblical point of view on marriage, that view which has been as ancient as the church, um, are considered to be those that are a harm and causing a harm to society. Now, let me also hasten to say that apart from the legal decision, uh, which I disapprove the use of the word harm there, I will say that much that Christians say and do um, is harmful, not only on the issue of homosexuality, but adulterers and sinners and uh, of every stripe and, and people of other religious uh, traditions and so forth. And this needs to be addressed. Yeah. You've heard me say again and again that one of the, one of the heartbreaks that I have is that the most recent survey of Greenville County, South Carolina, done by the county, finding out what people want in their neighborhood, churches were at the bottom of the list. Uh, and, and not only that, the comment section had many from the gay community who were saying, um, you know, we, we, we get that you don't agree with us. We, we get that you uh, think what we're doing is wrong, sinful. Can you at least teach your kids not to deface our property and vandalize our uh, our homes? The, there's a huge yeah. disconnect. Right. If the church thinks that it's ever going to do the, the work of God by implementing the activities of, of hell, I mean, we, we, ought to, we ought to, somewhere along the line, when you say you love Jesus with all your heart and you remember that Jesus yeah. loved and fellowship, spent his time with sinners, uh, if you think and believe, as I do, that this behavior is sinful, then you are under the greatest of obligations to be compassionate and to do all in your power to establish a relationship through which you can lead people yeah. to Christ. Yeah. And, and, and isn't this what we're seeing in Hybels? I mean, right. part of the response here, Beautiful this is why, example. Right. Where he's trying to build a bridge, can we at least sit down and at least talk? Mm-hmm. Do we, we lose Brother Stevin there? No, we keep losing him. His, he's having internet connection problems. So okay. just go ahead and keep on rolling. Yeah. We'll get him back. Um, in this decision, uh, it should be clear that um, Time, Time Magazine uh, um, is reporting um, the decision did less than many gay rights advocates had hoped. It said nothing about whether the U.S. Constitution guarantees gays and lesbians the right to marry someone of their own sex. Um, and then also, I think what everyone knew, I, I think everyone knew that the, the Ninth Circuit Court was going to overturn this and that the real showdown is coming at the Supreme Court level. I mean, that, that's where we're headed with this. And if you read uh, different stories, it seems like it's going to come down to one su Supreme Court justice, and that's Kennedy. I mean, how, how Kennedy rules on this, he is the swing vote in all of this. 
Um, and so, you know, we'll, we'll find out with the Supreme Court ruling. Mm-hmm. Now, and what's funny about this, and we, we're, we're, not, we're not talking about this story, but I don't know if you saw the interview with uh, uh, Ginsburg, the Supreme Court justice. Oh, yeah. And she was Ruth, saying, Ruth she was saying if, uh, oh, uh, she said if, if she were st- going to write a constitution, she would not use the United States Constitution as a kind of a blueprint that she would look to, if she were writing a constitution today, she would look to some of the other countries, and she basically... Yeah, yeah we covered you know, this one. I mean, like, uh, you know, when we first started the show, like in the first year, yeah, yeah. we yeah we covered that, where she said that she would look at some of the European models. Right, and that, right. That, this this is like just in the last week, uh, giving, an, an, I guess, another interview. But that, to me, is scary, um, and that and that affects all of this. Yeah. I think I think one of the things that that disturbs me is just this point that Steve makes that what we are being what's happening is that Christians are being viewed as the ones who are causing harm in society. So, in essence, society must be protected from us. That the law should should protect its citizens from us. But but it even goes deeper than that in my mind, and that is that there can be no airing, uh, civil discourse, debate freedom of speech for this 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 point of view as you point out causing a harm to this segment of the population which is what this finding says uh, renders our speech illegitimate speech yeah it's it's almost right. tantamount to calling for violent overthrow of the government which is also not protected speech and and proscribed outlawed speech but but traditionally, we have solved these issues as a society by free di- discourse, by free exchange of ideas. And, uh, and, and to forbid that now, I think it bodes uh, ill for the social contract yeah. that, that we've lived under. All righty. Well, there'll be more on this. This is going to Supreme Court. This is not the final ruling. Um, and so it'll make it to the top. And when it, it's you know covered, we'll... Or when it when it happens, we'll cover it. I mean, is our is our entire court system flawed? The way that you have to appeal to this and appeal to this, and I, I know I know the Supreme Court cannot hear every. Uh, oh, they'll hear this case. They I mean, they down. they can't hear every case, but yeah. I'm just thinking: Have we? I don't know. We're just in a in such a, a society that it's all about litigation. Yeah, litigation. We'd have to have Paige Cunningham. She she could she could give us an opinion on this. I I'm not sure that it's flawed. I think that it's overreaching right now. It's like this: the highways. You, you could make the same argument. Are our highways bad because so many people are dying on them? When actually we know that if more people drove according to the rules of the road. And, and here I'm being a little hypocritical. <laughs> <laughs> hey, little? Okay. Uh, 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 so but if more people it. drove by the rules of the road, we'd have less accidents and less carnage and, <laughs> and the rest of it. So We're going to save that clip for all time. Yeah, I bet you will. I bet you will. That will be one of the enduring quotes of this. Um, but I, I, I mean, Steve, you and I have had the conversation that it does seem like we're in an era where the courts are overreaching. Um and you have a very few people who are making decisions for 300 million people. Um, again, I'm not a law expert. Uh, there are others that we, you know, we probably should tap who could speak to that. Um, let's let's keep things moving here, and um, we're going to go to our download of the week. Oh, okay. Whoa. So that started there, but we got the audio media in here. Eventually, so you guys are gonna hear we are here going to go. It's all right. It's all right. Just don't worry about it. Here we go. Sometime today, download of the week. All right, and our download of the week is Executor. One of the things I love... It's not very nice. Yeah. <laughs> very gracious, these downloads that we choose. One Agent of, Ransack, Executor. <laughs> one of the things... guillotine. <laughs> <laughs> one of the apps I love on Apple is um, Alfred. I used to use... What was the first Quick one? Quicksilver, and I still use it. They've updated it. It's all open source now, and it's ready for prime time on OS Ten Lion. I still love it. But I'll talk about why I love it after you talk yeah, about it. Yeah, I, I, well, I like Alfred better. Um, but 
I, I looked for the equivalent of this in on a Windows machine and couldn't find it. And Techzilla just did uh, a recommendation of this, and this is what it is. This is uh, for a Windows machine uh, executor. Works just like Alfred on um, a Mac, or and, and, and what it does is you just have a a, a couple hotkeys. So on. Um, you know, on the Mac, you just hit these two hotkeys, and you just start typing into a window. And so, I don't go to an application and find it. I just hit this the, these hotkeys, start typing. Like with Firefox, if I'm going to my web browser, as soon as I hit F, it's the top choice. It, it's it's uh, it's a quick launcher, but there's more to it. I mean, that, that that's the technical term for for that application that you're talking about. It's a quick launcher, but there's so many other things that there's little plugins that it'll do. Um, with with Alfred, it learns as you right. as you go along. It begins to to know. All right, when you type F, and then you you know you usually are going to follow that by an I R E if you're going to Firefox. So it begins to adapt to that. And if you type Firefox uh, a lot, just by hitting that F key, Firefox starts to move up the ranks to the very beginning. That's how these programs work. So they're really great for stuff like that. Some of them have plugins where they can control iTunes. Uh, to where you, like you can you can pause and play music or switch tracks or whatever right from there. Uh, Quicksilver I know lets you you can send an email right from within it. Like if you needed to fire off a quick email, uh, there's there's a command for mail too. You can type the well, person's name in, type the email, and it's gone just like that. I mean, just fantastic. Yeah, Alfred. If you just start, yeah, I mean, you can get into a document, you can get into a folder, you can get into your email. I mean, all of that. Yeah. And Executor. I mean, I've tried others that I would not recommend, but Executor, I. Ran that a little bit last week and thought, well, finally they have something. So yeah. um, check it out. Now, one of the things that I love about Quicksilver, which really is the granddad of all these applications, they were at the at the forefront. It was actually just one guy who was hired by Google. He open sourced the code because he didn't have time to continue developing it. Uh, he, he's a pretty quiet spoken guy, but I believe he works for them now. Um, so now there's a team working on it. I think that they finally got to the point where they're they're doing great. Uh, I think it's quicksilverapp.com or something like that. Okay. But anyways, or qsapp.com. Um, one of the plugins that I found that I really love is a clipboard history. One time I was working on something, I had copied a, a bit of text, was going to paste it. Before I realized what I was doing, I'd closed the window that I'd copied that text out of, which was something that I had written and had copied something else. And I'd lost what was in my clipboard, that, that very important, you know, two paragraphs of text that I had. Well, there's a plugin with Quicksilver that actually is, you can set it to go back however long you want, but that will keep a clipboard history to where you can go Find back it. and pull cool. pull those things. And I love it now. It sits down in the bottom right-hand side of, of the window now. And even if you mouse down there, it just scrolls up, shows you all your clipboard history, lets you pull that stuff out that's of there. Nice. And, and recent, it's and, really neat. And that's an add-on for Quicksilver? Quicksilver, yeah. Yeah, right. which really, like I said, is the granddad. It went through a while when it was being open source where it was not maintained well, and there was kind of like, okay, what are we doing with this? It took other developers a while to understand what this one guy had put together because it was so deep and intense. But I think they're finally at a point where it's ready again for for prime time. But yeah, how great that there is a, now a, a Windows version of that because every time I switch to... Any any other machine, I'm so trained now right. mentally with I, these I'm quick the same launchers way. that I can't operate without it. Well, and, and I have I have on Ubuntu, I have a quick launcher, and so yeah, uh, and Windows is the only I, I go and to I, do it in I Windows. And die. It's like, oh, if I ever minute. use anybody else's computer and they don't have the hotkey set up. The, yeah. Like I do, it, it, I well, work so much slower. Check it out. Uh, check it out. Uh, we have the link there, and that that I believe that's vetted through CNET. And so, check it out. Try it. Watch a video on YouTube so you can see how it works. All right, let's move on to they said it. Let's do it. I've never taken steroids or HGH. I took the initiative in creating the internet. The Macintosh. Of all the machines I've ever seen, it is the only one that meets that standard. Well, I'm not a crook. If you if you know what you're doing here, slide slide out. It's not a good idea. It's not a bad idea. It's a horrific idea. It would be one of the poorest things that we could do as a franchise. Are we going to go find another guy for just a couple of years again? Haven't we done this before? Haven't we seen this act before? And by the way, if you get Peyton Manning, don't you have to... Uh, don't you have a concern about protecting him? Don't you have a concern about who he throws the football to? 
We're tired of looking for stop gaps. Former Redskins quarterback and Hall of Famer Joe Theismann letting his feelings be known on what he thinks of Peyton Manning going to the Washington Redskins. Source, the Washington Post. Catholics are, in a sense, going to be forced to subsidize through insurance payments these activities that the church considers to be immoral. Everything we do in terms of service to the people has to come from a Catholic perspective because that's who we are. Bishop Robert Guglielmoni of the Diocese of Charleston commenting on the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services mandate that insurance plans include coverage for contraceptives. Source, WYFF4 News. I was treated as someone with an agenda against the church. The police investigation was obstructed and the laity misled. I was distraught. Marie Collins, who was assaulted as a 13-year-old by a hospital chaplain, Marie was speaking this week at a four-day symposium at Rome's Pontifical Georgian University ahead of a, a May deadline to deliver their sex abuse policies to the Vatican. Source 660 News. Online dating has some benefits, but accurately matching, accurate matching apparently isn't one of them. Addie Robinson citing a study that is to be published in Psychological Science in the Public Interest. He goes on to say a team of researchers led by Eli Finkel of Northwestern University has concluded that despite claims that matching algorithms can predict long-term compatibility based on personality questionnaires and demographic information, the data that dating sites collect is barely relevant to how well a couple will weather challenges or even interact. Source, The Verge. All right, we can jump in anywhere here. Um, interesting, the, the, this whole thing with the contraceptives in the Catholic Church, um, I did a little bit of follow-up on this. With This is all in conjunction to um, the, uh, what we call Obamacare, what's been passed and what's coming in 2012. Churches and um, other Christian institutions actually have till August 2013 to implement this. Um, regular businesses of not of a religious persuasion have till August 2012. So August of this year, religious organizations get an additional year on this. Uh, but but clearly, you have policy that goes against the moral teachings of a denomination. Right. And yeah. I, I linked a second article here. I mean, there of the are, historic church. Yeah, yeah, there are evangelicals who, who are crying out against this as well, and I've linked you know a second article about this. Now, I, I do want to say something. I, th I think something very necessary to say on reproductive rights. Um, we as Protestants don't have a lot to say about non-abortive reproduction um, services, but the morning after pill and, and, and several other kinds of pills which effectively produce abortions, we would be against. Abort a living um, um, uh, fertilized egg. So now, the, the claim is by the other side that this is us forcing our religious view on them. Well, right. whether it is or not, it is a legitimate point of view. We as citizens have the right to express that point of view. But I would suggest that anybody who feels that this comes solely from a Judeo-Christian perspective go back and read the original Hippocratic Oath, which came out of pagan Greece, mm. written by the father of, of medicine, Hippocrates. And part of what he says he will not do is he won't help assist somebody in their own suicide, and he will not uh, perform an abortion. Mm. Not only that, but John Wesley, and, and I was talking with a, a friend of mine here that is a PhD, and he was in the area last night. We, we went out to eat, and I mentioned to him something that he was not aware of, maybe some of our listeners are. When Wesley first came to America, to Georgia, he came not only as priest to the colony of Georgia under General Oglethorpe, but also as a missionary to the Indians right. because they were unevangelized. And when he made his first contact with the Choctaw Indian chief, the chief told him, we know that white men are not superior to us. Now, this is not verbatim. You can go read the exact quote in his journal. He said, we know that white men are not superior to us, but they have been given the book by the Great Spirit, the book being the Scriptures. Wow. And he said, and we know that the Spirit will not give us that book 
until we stop doing what we already know to be wrong. And he lists a great list of things, killing elders and, and fathers killing uh, young children after they've been born. And he said, until our women stop killing the children before they come to birth. Who writes this on their hearts? This was not Judeo-Christian teaching. And so I, I think what we're doing is we're using technology often and a non-religious basis or perspective, allegedly non-religious, all perspectives have some influence of religion, either anti-religion or pro-religion. But we're using that as a means of deadening our innate conscience, that inborn part of us that ought to be revolted at the, at the taking of innocent human life without point. Now, if it's for the saving of a mother's life, you know I've, I've gone on record in the past, and I don't even know if our denomination does that, but my personal view is that if it's to save a, a mother's life, though the Catholic Church does not approve of this, I think that that's legitimate. You're making a decision between hmm. two lives there. And, uh, but, but the claim that it's only you Christians, yeah. and it's only you forcing your religious view on us. No, it's yeah, our great view. Great point. Yeah. Great point. I, also in this, I think that just the whole idea of conscience, Martin Luther said this, that one option that men and women do not have is to violate their own conscience. Mm -hmm. and, and his point being this, at the end of the day, there are only two people you have to live with, and that's God and yourself. Right. Right. And if you can't be true to yourself. And so here you have, a, a, I mean, the Catholics are articulating this very well. Very well. This is who we are. This is who we are. This is who we've been historically. We can't be anything other than Catholic. I mean, that's what this, this priest is saying here. The, uh, um, I heard uh, Chris, Chris Matthews was talking about this, and, and he, uh, um, obviously he's in favor of, of the health care legislation, but uh, he was saying, well, doesn't the Catholic Church lose some of its authority? Because how can you teach on something and then you're actively going against what you're teaching because you're being forced to? And I think that is a great... A great point. I mean, the the by this law, the government is forcing uh, the the Catholic Church to lose some credibility. And here here's the thing, and I don't think this affects. Let's say that that our church got to multiple staff and had a group health care policy. Do we fall under this law? And that's you know that's a scary scary thing to uh, to think about and. He, it's just scary. Okay, kind of a sideline. I mean, it's been uh, we Stevan had to drop out, and we have some co connectivity issues. As a sideline to this story, uh, we saw just before we came on the air the story coming out of the very town that Stevan lives in, yeah. the university there, where um, students can go to a vending machine and get the morning after pill. Yeah, you can get uh, a decongestant, uh, condoms, um, the morning after pill, and there was one other thing. I can't remember what the other thing was, but those are the there were four things you can get out of this. I can tell you one thing you can't pie. get. You can't, get, <laughs> Pregnancy a, you, you, you can't get a Gideon New Testament out of it. <laughs> oh my! That's my own private was, bitterness. Being yeah. <laughs> well, and because we wouldn't want that to produce harm in the oh, society. That's right. That's, that's right. right. Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, hey, okay, levity here. A little bit of let's just change gears big time. Peyton Manning. Uh, Joe Theismann, man, Joe Theismann just unloads here, and I have no interest in getting Peyton. Well, this Manning. I don't think this I don't think uh, Joe Theismann. This is not a knock on Peyton Manning. The fact of the matter is, is that next month Peyton Manning will be 36 years old. Yeah. He is coming off major neck surgery. Right. Reports are his arm strength is down 40. percent mm. So Joe Theismann, it's no knock against how great Peyton, Peyton Manning is and how great he has been. It's the fact that the Redskins have got to. Pick a, no, I, I, pick I a thing, and I, let me just, I mean, the Redskins, during the mid to late 80s, very early 90s, one of the most consistent, uh, I mean, I would put them up there with the Steelers as far as the as consistent franchise, and since Dan Snyder brought, bought the team, they have just been flashing the pan. They've tried to. <laughs> well, that that may be the issue there. I mean, he's uh, come on. He he's part of a group of about four or five owners in the NFL that can't keep their finger out of the pie. Yeah, that's exactly right. They can't. I mean, wouldn't you love? Wouldn't you love to uh, to to uh, work for the Rooney family in Pittsburgh? Yeah. They hire you and they leave you alone. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. They let you do. They let 
football people make right. football exactly. decisions. And, and, you know, hard for me to say this, that's really what's happened in Dallas. Dallas, a- absolutely and, and even though, you know, when the Cowboys were winning three Super Bowls, Let's just be totally honest. All okay, right? be totally honest. The right Cowboys now, won three Super Bowls because they traded Herschel Walker for about twenty-seven players, and all of which, many of which turned out to be great draft picks. They were. Many of which turned out to be All-Pro players, and so that collection. Of, Barry Switzer won a Super Bowl with that talent. Okay, <laughs> that's what we're talking about. And so it's almost like you could not, couldn't not win a Super Bowl with that talent. And so I Are you saying you could have coached the Cowboys during that era, Heath? Yes. I'm saying that. <laughs> I could have won at least one Super Bowl coaching those Cowboys. I'd have been like, boys. I hate that we were robbed. Guys, curfews at 5 a.m. So. Half. I mean, you know. Um, All right. Well, let me put the train back on the rails. <laughs> Something a little more serious here. Um this week there is a symposium. It's going on even today um, at, uh, at Georgia University, um, and it is about sex scandals. And the, the Vatican is supposed to release new sex abuse policies. And Marie Collins spoke there. She was invited by the Catholic Church to come speak, um, and she had you know second thoughts about it, but in the end decided to do it. Um, the interesting article. Uh, I, I I would. I would encourage you to read it uh, first. I didn't even realize how uh, wide scale this is. I mean, the priests who are there um, represent 100 countries. Um, the, in terms of violations, the estimate is this, three to 4,000 sex abuse cases that were, and here's the tragedy, they were covered up. And you have the whole church, uh, the, the system within the church that was covering it up. And even as Marie Collins talks about, when she first came forward back in 96, she was treated as if she was the problem. Mm-hmm. Um, and, I mean, and this is a tragedy. Mm-hmm. And now, can I just blow this beyond the Catholic Church? Mm-hmm. Um, th- this isn't just a Catholic Church issue. We could give it va- a- examples in the evangelical movement. Yes. Whoa. Um, where uh, yeah, w- people were moved along. Yes, people were moved along, um, and if, if and and the church, excuse me, the world has an expectation of the church, and it's this that we would not do that, that right. we would have integrity about this, right, yeah. right. Um, and so you know we don't run from this. The closet needs to be thrown wide open, and these skeletons need to be raked out, and confession needs to happen. I mean, yeah, whenever the church, not the Catholic Church, but any church, does something like this. It's wrong. Mm-hmm. Right, right. And I think you're exactly right that, uh, you know, there's examples within our own denomination of people who've just kind of been passed along. And, and, and I think sometimes there's uh, moral issues involved. And then I, a lot of times I think there's competence issues involved. I mean, we, you know, we look at the this Catholic situation and see these – you know these people who were moved from one the in abuse situations moved from one place to another and just kept abusing and abusing and abusing but i mean how many times have we passed somebody who was incompetent and maybe they weren't in sin and they didn't abuse people but they they were church killers well, you know what i mean and get this you talking about our own denomination we have uh we have certain policies in our denomination and one of those policies is this that if um, there are certain sexual offenses that we have now put in print that if you are guilty of them, right. you cannot be a minister in the Wesleyan Church. And I was actually yeah. in a meeting one time where someone was seeking um, ordination in the Wesleyan Church, and they had one of these violations. Yeah. And this is what the gentleman said to me. Yeah. Well, if you go back and you look at this, and this was like 25 years ago, if you go back and you look at that, you will see that that particular family decided not to press charges, and the local authorities on their own did not press charges. Mm-hmm. And this was the minister's argument, uh, or the potential minister. This is why he wanted yeah. to be considered for ministry. And my comment to him was, the church isn't just subject to the legal laws of the land. Right. We hold a trust. Yes, yes. And and so we we don't just answer to these laws here, yeah. and I am all for law yeah, and, and order within a society, but we, we also answer to a supreme law 
um, mm -hmm. that, that is that that supersedes that. This reminds me of of the point that my Christian ethics professor, Dr. Uh, Steve McCormick of Nazarene Theological Seminary, is trying to drill into my head presently, and that is, he's quoting Harwas, who says that uh, the church does not have a Christian ethics, and uh, quoting now, the church is. A Christian ethics that is a, a system a, a paradigm of changing the whole way the entire way the world views itself us its relation to creation and to God and that is our role that is your salt absolutely. and your light absolutely and and there's your uh, there's your mission outlined for you right there yeah all right. Uh, well, the, the last story here was uh, this study that's coming out of Northwestern University, and we have in the, a lot of the commercials you see on TV or on here on radio the idea of these online dating things. They do a much better job of picking <laughs> partners, you know, that, that you're more compatible with. Well, this study says. <laughs> not true. Not true. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It, it doesn't seem to do that. I mean, how many people do you know that have been happily married for? decades and would have failed this this test you know if you tried to put them compatibility With the compatibility thing yeah who knows yeah the i remember they used to do this in high school you'd answer like 20 questions you'd get your print out of who you were compatible <laughs> with and you were like just what? praying look i'm compatible with three cheerleaders hey when, <laughs> hey, when, when you're homeschooled that's a really <laughs> weird list <today. laughs> <laughs> but you know a lot of a lot of these um um, I mean, I know I have friends who met through, you know, online uh, online dating sites and fell in love and got married. And I, I mean, <laughs> poor Steve. Steve just I got you it. on that one. Yeah. I love it. I love yes. it. I love it. Oh, I made God. a funny. Yay. That's like the old great Tim Hawkins joke. I was homeschooled and both my parents worked. <laughs> well, <laughs> Listen, the, uh, <laughs> it, it, we, we're right now we're doing something in our Sunday school class uh, it, on marriage enrichment, and and as part of that we did the Myers Briggs. And we actually brought uh, Chaplain Ken Dillon from Southern Western University, and he talks about the Myers Briggs, and it's amazing. We have three or four <laughs> couples in there that if you put them on this compatibility thing, yeah, they, they weren't they're not compatible at all. On, on the Myers Briggs, they are exact opposites, yeah. you know, and so you know that a computer would have never put them together. Um, and so, to me, just anecdotally, this this report seems right. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. Um, just want to let you know that uh, in terms of the future, what's coming up uh, on the 22nd of February, we have the CEO of World Hope, Tom Arminger. Dr. Tom Arminger will be with us. And then on February 29th, uh, Joan Rampey is going to be in studio. Her and her husband, um, our district superintendent, Buddy Rampey, took a trip to Haiti back in December. She's going to talk about that. Also, we'll have Greg Edmonds on at the top of the show for about five, ten minutes. He's uh, he's there in Haiti. We'll bring, bring him in via Skype, and he'll talk a little bit about uh, what's going on there and the hospital that they're building and yeah. And where they are and the progress with that. On March the 7th, Heather Semple will uh, join us. She is the lead pastor now of Cedar, uh, Red Cedar Community Church up yes. in Rice Lake, Wisconsin. Um, and we have talked a lot about women in ministry. And um, actually, Dr. Joanne Lyon uh, put her on our radar screen and said, hey, this would be a Good. great interview. You need to get her on. Yeah. So looking forward to that. On March the 28th, we have uh, Stephanie Ryan from FWC Alive. She's going to talk to us about children's ministries. And um, we've seen her do some cool stuff, not just in the church, but district-wide, where she took one of her really good workers and sent just them to another church. Her. I mean, it was amazing. One of her, her basically her right-hand person. And there was another church on our district that was trying yeah. to get a children's ministry up off the ground. And just, yeah, just it's, like, it's like an NFL trade. I mean, it was amazing, yeah. except she didn't get anything in return. Got a, got a Sunday school teacher <laughs> to be named later. Yeah. And, and <laughs> <laughs> well, and the beauty of this is it's, it's this is the way the church ought to work, right? Yeah, oh, it's Absolutely. tremendous. Yeah, we're that. resourcing one another. April the 4th, we have Wayne Schmidt uh, going to talk to us about his book, Ministry Velocity. And then on April 24th, 
the 25th, we're going to have Mark Wilson, and he's uh, always a great guest. He's yeah. going to talk to us about his book, uh, Filled Up and Poured Out. Uh, this is um, it's already at the printers being done and should be out and for us to preview before the 25th. And that's just a taste because we've got so many people – in the wing that we are working on trying to finalize dates, some pretty cool yeah. names and things that we're hoping that will come through for everybody. So be- definitely stay tuned. Apologies for me today. Uh, I mean, there's really nothing I could do to help it, but today's show was uh, technical difficulties. So our apologies to Steven, yep. to uh, you guys who joined us live. You recorded listeners won't uh, have quite as bad an experience, but it's been a rough day technically for us. So uh, I'm thankful that these things don't happen often that we're typically able to I wonder if this has to do with having Steven on the show, yeah, Maybe. Very well yeah. good. and we do we do have a giveaway that uh, yes, almost forgot about that. Yeah, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> what? Go ahead, I sent it to you. I sent it to you. <laughs> oh, did you send yes, me the number? I sent, it, I sent you the person, the name. Oh, of the person. and the winner is <laughs> Joe Gorman. There you go. Wow, right. congratulations, there Joe. There you go. Uh, did he and, just and, win and, something? And listen now, how does he get that? Does the when you? Uh, I will get in touch with Joe and get him to send me his address, and we'll get that to headquarters, and they'll get that out to him. Great. Good enough. All right. Um, Heath, let our listeners know where they can find you. They can find me if they go to heathmulligan.com. They can link there to my Facebook and Twitter and all that good stuff, and uh, good things happening. Stevie. I no longer exist on Facebook. I know. And so if you want to find me, pastorses at gmail.com. I do occasionally appear on Google Plus, but I really don't hang out there. All right. MatthewTG.com. All right. You can find me at uh, Facebook.com forward slash AKC64. If you want to do further research on anything we discussed today, you can find all the links to the stories we covered at our website, thetechnologyshow.com. If you want to contact us, send your emails to thetechnologyshow at gmail.com or leave us a voicemail by calling us at 3049 Theology. That's 304-986-5649. Leave us a message. We may even play your comments on the air. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Adios. Sayonara. See ya. Arrivederci. Get a man. Adios. Hey, stay tuned because check this out. Watch this video. Saying, Here we watch go. Watch this video. Here we go. Watch it. Here it is. Here, 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 here. It looks like Tony Casey. Yeah, it does. Go. Here it is. I don't see anything. I see something. All right, one one more time because uh, that that was <laughs> that was kind of tough. But watch this camel, watch it run. Okay. Go. Oh, he's racing. Oh, they're racing. Okay. Did you see how that camel ran? Did you see that? But it's now not running as a camel running. traditionally runs. 